Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Richard Sherbo, director of the National Orchestral Institute and Festival. Tonight's broadcast features a highlight from last summer, which was our semi-staged performance of Maurice Ravel's comic opera, Lore Espanol, or in English, The Spanish Hour. Normally at this time, we'd be gathering in the lobby of the Clarice Smith Performing Arts Center in our Spark Lounge for a pre-concert conversation with our artists and conductors and students. Well, tonight I'm happy to welcome to our virtual Spark Lounge, two wonderful colleagues from Wolf Trap Opera. Here to talk about this thrilling performance and much, much more are Morgan Brophy, Assistant Director for Artistic Administration of Wolf Trap Opera, and baritone Joshua Conyers, who you'll see featured as Ramiro in tonight's performance. Now I'm going to hand the mic over to them to lead tonight's talk. Joshua and Morgan, thank you so much for being here and welcome to you, to you both. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, Richard. It's great to be here. Hi, Josh. <laughs> yeah, how you doing, Morgan? It's so good to see you. Too. I mean, I wish I was there with you at Wolf Trap. I, I know. I, so much. <laughs> I know. I know. So, um, so where are you geographically right now? Um, so I'm here with my wife and my two dogs uh, in Watertown, Massachusetts. So Boston, pretty much. Boston. Got it. Got it. Got it. And how are the puppies? Oh, the puppies are so good. <laughs> Oh, I miss them. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, one of them was in the show last Yes, summer. yes. She's a star. So uh, okay. she's definitely the star, the star of the family. So that, no, yeah, great. Yeah. What about you? Where, where are you? I see the beautiful. I, yeah, I am I'm currently in beautiful uh, Luray, Virginia. We, uh, my husband and I came out here to a, a lake for the weekend. weekend so we're broadcasting from uh, from the woods here. There's some bugs and some birds and, and there's nature all around. But it was nice to kind of get some sun today, get outside. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been beautiful, beautiful here. Uh, so so we, we wanted to get out of the city. Um, so that's where we're at. Sure. Um, it's nice that the, you and your wife are able to kind of be together right now. That's I'm not fine. usual for someone who travels, travels around so much normally, right? Yeah, it's kind of, it's like a, you know, a blessing and, you know, and, you know yeah. With, yeah. all of the, the pandemic going on and, but exactly. it's nice to be home and not just be home yeah. for a week or a month and be away. Yeah. It's been nice, been nice to be home for a few months. It's been That's great. so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are finding some of those silver linings right now, I think is, sure. is important. It's Absolutely. it's it's hard to focus on all of the the doom and gloom part of this, part of this. And and so finding some of those those silver linings are is really, really a good thing. Um, so what have you been doing to stay creative? Or have you been cooped up? Are, are there things you're doing to kind of keep those creative juices flowing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I think like a lot of musicians and artists, we're, we're becoming like content creators, you know, usually, mm -hmm. especially for an opera singer, you know, we, you know, we learn our music on our own and we go on stage you know, we do our thing, our thing, and you know, it's done. It's yeah. might, might record it, they might, you know, broadcast, but now, you know, I have to learn how to, you know, record my own, you know, my own songs, my own arias and put it out to the world, you know, to, yeah. just, you know, get music out there to, to you know, music can be very healing. Yeah. So I'm learning how to edit and, you know, learning, <laughs> you know, just all these weird things that my computer can do that I never knew. I thought it was <laughs> So, <laughs> all kinds uh, of new skills, skills. All, all kinds of new skills so uh i've also been uh, doing a lot of uh panel discussions like this one for instance sure yeah um i just did one um you know still we rise um with the right 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 bottom, bottoms. and it was just uh just young black artists and you know we mm -hmm. had some people with some um more established artists in there um mm -hmm. Who just from artists um, to you know musicians to you know uh, classical musicians, jazz, jazz musicians, all just kind of and teachers. Amazing. And what it's like to be you know black and be a musician, and what what it's like also to be black in America. Wow. Um, we just had it was some beautiful discussions. I think we're going to continue continue to have a few more of those so everybody watch out for those. That's so great. That's so great. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that you're sort of engaging in conversations like that with fellow artists. Um, what, what kinds of, like, from your perspective, what do you hope that accomplishes? Where, where do you want this to go? So um, we have to realize that the state of America today is that it's not something that's new. This is not a new issue. This is, this is something that's always been going in cycles in all different shapes and forms for the past 400 years. And we yeah. uh, realized that with this momentum that we have now that it's time to, to take that and let our voices be heard. 
Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, we, we have to keep, you know, companies, but uh, particularly as a musician, we have to keep them accountable and not just, you know, this time, okay, this company is like, all right, what are we going to do? We're going to do a show and have a ton of, ton of, you know, black people or a ton of people of color, you know, mm-hmm. and then do it for a year. And then in 10 years, it's all gone. Right. You know, until the right. next tragedy happens. Yep. So we have to keep the conversation going. Mm-hmm. We, have, we have to, um, you know, make sure that all of our voices are being heard, all ages, mm-hmm. you know, all sizes, you know, everybody. And, you know, it's important for our allies to, you know, make sure that they're doing their part as well. So, mm-hmm. right. Right. You, know, you know, we just have to continue to move this thing forward. And at the time is now mm-hmm. 2020. It's now, the time is now. So I'm gonna make sure that my voice is heard um, and make sure that people who look like me, you know, get opportunities to, you know, be in leadership, to stage. And uh, I'm gonna be an advocate for all of us. Amazing, wow. Thank you for, for being one of the voices that for, 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 for be participating in conversations like that and, and keeping it at the forefront. Sure. Um, so such important work and, and uh, I'm really, really thrilled that you're, you're doing some of that work. It's, um, it's huge, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And just, so if you. I can just say, just talk a little bit about, yeah. and I remember my first time auditioning uh, for the studio <laughs> program. <laughs> uh, I want to say, well, it was my, it was my senior year. So 2010. Wow. Um, and uh, I didn't get in. Well, you know, you know, I, I had my, you know, I auditioned four times before I got in. But, <laughs> uh, but what there was the first and only time still to this day where I walked in and it was all women. Mm. You know, and um, mm-hmm. even, you know, just to segue into the show, you see yeah. before we, uh, you see the artists of color on the Wolf Trap stage. Yeah. And I just want to let people know that Wolf Trap, Wolf Trap is a leader in diversity, uh, uh. women and women in, you know, leadership, women of color that are on your staff. And uh, Wolf, Wolf Trap Opera should be a model for all opera companies out there that, that they're, they're doing it right. And they didn't need... Um, the death of somebody to do it. And I applaud you guys. And I was so proud to be, you know, a Feline, you know, young art, a Feline artist for two years, for the past two years. So, so. Uh, uh, I love you. Been, I mean, it was such a joy to have you in, in the company and, and, you know, we don't, we don't talk about it publicly a lot, but, but we do try really hard to make sure that there is, uh, you know, representation and inclusion across the company and not just the artists, not just the visible part of the company, but people behind the scenes is really important to us. And, and we, you know, maybe we're not vocal, vocal enough about it, but, but we, I think we try to just do the work. We try to just do it. Sure. Like Nike, can we get a Nike? That's right. We, we, need, it. <laughs> we need we need the actions today and keep yeah, keep going. Yeah. If you can go further, keep going because uh, yeah. I support you guys. I love you guys. And it's- oh, thank you. We love you, Josh. Yeah, thank you. Oh my gosh, you've said so many nice things. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, you taught you started to talk about your your audition process through Wolf Trap, and I actually I wanted to ask like what you you auditioned for wolf trap four times um, so one, that, one time one time as for a studio and then three right? times for a filing yeah, yeah before you got an offer right oh, yeah. so mm-hmm. the fourth time is when you actually got an offer so what would, you, what would you say to young singers that are that are going through a lot of that rejection part of this job is rejection but would you what kind of advice would you have i know what i would say but but what would you say to a young singer who's gone through three auditions and hasn't gotten an offer yet and just isn't sure if it's worth number four for yeah so i can just tell you about my my just experience um with that so it's particularly with wolf trap um i auditioned three times and you know i said to myself you know Oh, well, I guess, you know, because I did get, I did get a call back every time. So mm-hmm. um, that that's encouraging, but I was like, okay, well, maybe they don't, you know, maybe, you know, that's just not the right place for me. Maybe I'm just not what they're mm-hmm. looking for. And mm-hmm. I actually had another singer who I was working with because um, I had an audition for maybe two or three years at that point. Because mm-hmm. uh, as singers, we do, you know, it's hard to hear no. And mm-hmm. it's okay to to be sad about it, to be upset about it. Uh, but a singer said to me, you know, I, I, I auditioned that many times too before I got in as well. And I said, oh, really? And she said it was on her fourth try that she got in. 
Mm -hmm. I said, wow, you know, and she was doing the lead role, you know, and, and I was there as a young artist. And I said, okay, all right, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just go and give this another shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, you have to play the long game in this. Mm -hmm. instance, because you want, you want to make sure that, um, that you have longevity and that you're singing for a long time. And yeah. I hear a lot of no's, right? But, right. You know, but you can, but take those no's and just, and, and put them in your mind. And you say, it's not yet. Mm. just not yet for you mm. and who knows if I would have came out with Trap, maybe, Trap, maybe I wouldn't have been ready maybe that wasn't my time maybe I wouldn't have been a role that was not quite you know great for me and um you know this time around I did some really really good work with you guys and I did so much work and it was so great and like I, 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 I y'all put me to work I put you to work <laughs> um, and I just you know I tell people take those notes they mean not yet you keep working at your craft you keep going. Yeah. It, you know, this is a long career. career. Yeah. And you'll keep at it. And, you know, and don't let don't let it just bring you all the way down. You know, yeah. what? Yeah. Think about it. Have your emotions. Pick yourself back up and start singing. Start doing mm -hmm. more. How can you improve? You can always and always mm -hmm. improve. It never ends. The practicing never stops. Keep improving. Keep doing it. And I know it's just not yet for me. I need to hire you as my life coach, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, that kind of stuff right now is so important because of this, all of the cancellations and, and the consequences of COVID right now, it can be really hard to see the long game and to see that this is in some ways, some ways, you know, the universe saying a, a big fat no or not yet to a lot of people, um, myself included, you know, it, it's, it can be really hard to, to see beyond the next you know, you know, three, six, even 12 months Absolutely. Um, and know that it's, it's going to be okay. And I don't want to minimize anybody's experience by saying, Oh, it's just going to be okay. But, but you gotta, you gotta play the long game. Like you said, you said. Sure. yeah, you know, this is a, it's a really tough time with the, you know, COVID-19 and the state of affairs of America. And, you yeah. know, you know, I've, I've lost, you know, half of my season at, at Washington national opera and yeah. I money. Now I, I'm, you know, I can say that I'm in a privileged position because my wife has a very steady job. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm grateful for her, and that you know, I call her my sugar mama. So uh, that's what I'm my very, husband calls me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very grateful that, that I have that, but you know, not not a lot of people do. And you know, I I do come from a circumstance, you know, in my past where you know things didn't look like they were going to, you know, you know, become open and. You know, mm. things look gloomy and sad mm. and you don't know how you're going to get out and get out of it. So anybody who's struggling right now, just keep your heads up. I know it's tough and sometimes mm. it might not look like there's a way through or a way out of your situation, but there is a way you can figure it mm. out. Um, wow. I, I, if, I, if I could do it, I knew it, I know you can do it too. So just keep your heads up and just, you know, keep moving forward, keep pushing forward. And there's some, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. I just know it. I feel it. Yes. Yes. So, so in, in quarantine, have, have, have you found any new hobbies or, or coping mechanisms to, to kind of, for you to get through this and to keep that positive mentality up? Sure. So besides what, sitting on the couch and watch, watching a ton of Netflix, like, <laughs> Yeah, you try, you try, you try hard not to be a couch potato. Yeah, uh, you no, know, I. Cause so you know, my wife and I um, had COVID nineteen. Oh wow! So um, mm. that was hard and hard, and that's scary. You know, when when yeah, you know, you have tons of people dying from it, and yeah, people, you know, on the verge of death from it, and uh, right. we're fortunate and blessed uh, to be on the the better half of it. Um, mm. Luckily, I'm negative now. My wife, my wife is still positive. So keep, you know, keep wow. her prayers and your thoughts. Um, she's doing yeah. well. You know, she's doing well. She still has a, just a bit of a cough. But um, it's, you know, it's a scary time. But I've been, yeah. during this time, I've just been practicing, 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 just trying mm -hmm. to make sure that when, when this is over, that, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in good shape vocally. Yeah. And just, you know, picking up, uh, just learning new roles. Um, keeping my fingers crossed that the, 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 the small gigs that I do have, you know, yeah, yeah, get canceled. So, um, you know, just man, I'm just just trying to stay on my toes and you know, just, you know, pretend that Be you know, I have a job at the end of the you know, you know, at the end of the day and just yeah, just working, you know, I'm just working like nothing happened. So, mm. so just keep mm. working. That's a great approach, yeah, yeah, to stay, stay ready, stay ready. Zoom lessons might not be ideal, but try to get them to get them if you can. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Wow.
So I want to I want to get to, you know, the show. We're here. Right. So, watch. So. I know. I know that we could we could keep talking for, yeah. for hours and hours. I want to hear more about the puppies. But, but um, <laughs> let's talk about the show before we get to uh, Laura Spaniel, though. I, I mean, you've performed because you were at Wolf Trap for two seasons as a feline artist. You were able to perform with the NOI on three separate shows. Right. Shows, right? So first Song Fest in 2018. Is that right? And then uh, Porgy, uh, Porgy and Bess, the excerpts that we did, um, and Laura Espanol. Laura Espanol. Those were both in the same year, right? Yes, they're, they're both in the same year. That's right. Oh my gosh, we much into that season. <laughs> mm-hmm. that yeah. Me. Do you have a from <laughs> from those three shows? Do you have a favorite? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Don't make me choose. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, you know, there's, there's certain things that I like about them all. So, um, with well, first let me just say that NOI, NOI um, those are some of the best aspiring orchestra musicians that I've ever worked with in my life. They're amazing. These kids, amazing. Sound, um, amazing. I remember when I, and I uh, just a little comparison. I when we did yeah. Song Fest uh, with them. Um, um, I, I was doing that, um, the piece, I Too Sing America. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then I also had to do that, that, um, with the, um, the, the National Symphony Orchestra. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that those NOI kids were, or for me, were just on par with them. I tell you, I said, yeah. these kids are something else. So, yeah. so yeah. my hat's off to them. I'm, I'm just privileged and, and honored to work with them three times. So hats off to them. But, Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, the best was fabulous. Mm-hmm. Um, Song Fest, we got to record it, you know, and like, I, you know, I have a CD, CD. My name is on the CD. It's so you know? cool. It's so cool. <laughs> I mean, like, just like listening to it, like, I have, we bought two, I bought two, you know, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> I had all my family members buy one. So if you're here now, Did you buy a case like, and like sign them all. And yeah, so so I opened one just so I can, still, I have one. The first one that I bought, because I bought it as soon, I bought it midnight as soon as it like opened up. I bought yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe this is the first one, so I'm just gonna like keep it and it's have it keep it in its wrapping, oh. wrapping um, <laughs> you know, and just have it there. Um, but it's so Baby. cool, to just like play it and like, oh my gosh, like I'm on this recording. It's really really cool. I hope we get a Grammy. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Right? You know, so if you're listening to it, to it buy, buy it. It's absolutely amazing. Bernstein, yeah. is absolutely fabulous composer. Um, everybody on the on the project was absolutely amazing. So uh, if you can hear it, if you can get it, get it, please. It's absolutely fabulous. Mm. Amazing. So um, getting into the Lura Espanol, which is what we're about to see, um, can you tell us a little bit about what your role was and, and a little bit about, about the story? Okay. So uh, a little about the story. So my character is uh, a guy named uh, Ramiro, mm-hmm. and he is a, a muleteer. So he's a mule, a mule driver. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, what he is, he's a he's a, a mailman. So I mean, they used to uh, get on their mules and deliver mail. Uh, and he's uh, a guy of no experience when it comes to love. And he's kind of a simp- a very, very simple guy, but he's also a very masculine, you know, virile, you know, you know, uh, big, you know, guy. Mm-hmm. And um, there's this woman, woman um, by the name of uh, Concepcion. Mm-hmm. And um, she uh, has lots and lots of lovers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's married to uh, this clockmaker. And, uh, you know, every, you know, she always has this, you know, this Spanish hour where, you know, all of her or her lover comes in. So she's always entangled with one, one lover or not. And I'm there to get my watch fixed. So, so um, yeah. So uh, uh, the clockmaker, Torque Mada, he, you know, he's leaving to go fix, uh, you know, a clock somewhere else. And this is like she's trying to rush him out the door because this is her time to be with her lover. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, I, and I'm there waiting to get my clock, you know, get my my watch fixed. And she's trying to get me out of there as soon as possible, right? So she's like giving me the task of taking these clocks and, and these huge clocks and putting them into different rooms constantly so I can get out of there so she can have time. She has one hour to have time mm. for her lover before her husband gets back home. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but uh, I'm this, this strong, you know, big man that I keep I, I put the clock up there and then I come back down in five minutes. And she's like, "There's no way you can do this. Like, how are you doing this?" And then she, as I'm doing this, and I like, she's just finding me more and more and more attractive mm-hmm. uh, as I'm just, you know, picking up, you know, these clocks. And and the then uh, clocks. as yeah. as you're going, um, another one of her lovers or or somebody who's like really really wants to be with her comes in, who also interrupts, interrupts, you know. So then there's another guy, and then they all start hiding in the clocks. <laughs> well, yeah. So now that these guys are all hiding in clocks. Right. Every time I come down and I'm like, and she's like, can you take this clock? And so now, so now I'm picking up clocks with grown men in them <laughs> and picking them up the stairs to her room. Um, and she th- she's thinking that, okay, this is going to be heavy. This is going to take him more time. But no, but no, I get three or four minutes. I put the clock in there. I come back down. Like I was like lifting a like book. split. Yeah. <laughs> And after after a while, I mean, because one of one of her lovers is a young, young like poet, and he, you know she's trying to you know get it over with and you know do what she wants to do and buy, but mm-hmm. he's always talking. He's you know constant, constant, constant talk. And you know at the end of it, um, she's like, you know what, guy? To me, she said me. She says to me, it's like it might as well be you. Let's just finish this off. So she finally takes me upstairs. We do whatever you do. The husband comes back, and we just say, you know. This is, you know, this is what we do in a Spanish hour. And, uh, you know, so it is, and it's like, like, habanero style, Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So learn Espanol, the Spanish hour. Is hour, the, yep. and When all your lovers come over. When all your lovers come over in an hour. So, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Good to know. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure to, to let my husband know that uh, next time I send him out on an errand or something. Sure, yeah. <laughs> One hour. <laughs> One hour. One hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really really cool. You'll oh see because a lot of times, like this, like this is sem- this is a semi production. Right. Uh, even though we're like doing the whole shebang, usually yeah. the guys would go into a clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little something something like to give you guys to look forward to. It. Usually the guys would go like into the clock. They'll go behind backstage, mm-hmm. and then Caramiro uh, would just pick up an empty clock that's weight maybe like five or ten pounds right. and move it up. We didn't have that option, right? Because you can see us the orchestra is on stage, everything. So we were using dollies. Mm-hmm. And I had uh, the privilege of carrying them, dollying two different men off, off and on stage. You worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> you were sweat. Uh, oh, man. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I never worked so hard in my life. Oh, my gosh. And it was it was just a, it was a physical beast for me. And it was so challenging, yeah. so much fun. But yeah. also I need to uh, remind, uh, you know, Wolf Trap and Richard that, that I do have my receipts for like my Bengay and all the ice <laughs> and stuff on my back. Yeah. That I never got refunded for. Sure. So I'm just Send them about- over. Yeah. Send them over. <laughs> Take care of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember, remember watching you in rehearsals just sweating your face off i mean that you worked so hard i mean not to say that your colleagues josh level and calvin are you know heavy by any by any means but i mean fully grown grown men fully grown men you know i'm like (laughs) lugging off and then quickly before like the next get back on and then having to sing yes i I had to brush them off because then i had to like we had to get them up there up there put them on stage into the room Oh my gosh. I found and sing my aria and I had like unreal. So, unreal. Yeah, it was a journey. But yeah, you know, we did it. We did you it. Did it. You did, did it, it, man. It it was it was so much fun. I mean, do you have a, a favorite memory from that whole process? Is there something that sticks out that is it like a like a positive one? <laughs> <laughs> negative ones to yourself <laughs> i think uh the coolest thing is um at the beginning when you when you mm. hear the orchestra, orchestra mm. and, and what and what Ravel does and the mechanisms that he used i don't want to give it away yeah but like when you hear the way that this piece opens and how how clever this man is it's 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 mind blowing, and I'm just standing backstage, and you just hear it going. It's like, oh my gosh, this mm-hmm. is, I'm like having this experience backstage, backstage, and I'm just like, I'm wondering 
what's going on like in the mind of, of you know the audience members because I'm just like you hear these sounds yeah that you never think would, would work that you think would be weird and yeah, and yeah. Like, it's like wow this is absolutely incredible it's brilliant uh, yeah and actually uh my but my favorite line um uh that I that I do that you'll hear a lot is I uh -huh. say, voila, voila. voila every time I do something it's so easy that I just say <laughs> voila 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 <laughs> So it's it's uh it's a really really cool show. It's so much fun. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to watch it. I'm so I I know the rest of the cast and and artistic team and everybody is watching too. Sure, so for sure. I, I am sort of excited to know that we're all watching it together, even though we're in our separate places. Sure. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes left. Is there anything else you want to share about the show or about anything? Yeah, um, well, I just want to give a shout out to to the cast and the team. Mm -hmm. I mean. Um, the, the, what you're about to see is some, is some amazing artist. And, you know, in this, this piece is not easy by any means. I mean, Ravel, um, he wanted, you know, in, in his notes, you'll, you'll see that he wrote that he really wanted this to, this to be as close to speech as possible because lyric uh, French diction and spoken in French are very, very different. Um, so this, uh, this is very speech-like, but besides the, the, the mm -hmm. tenor, gets all of the all of the lush you know right the, right the, right you know, of course very he does. you know uh, lush music that yeah he, everybody else it's very speech like it's very chatty it's very unique it's very different and um, um these uh musicians these, these men absolutely professional singers uh taylor raven mm -hmm. uh, Concepcion, who's just a fabulous singer mm -hmm. um um, who else? Let me make sure. Um, Calvin Griffin. Calvin Griffin, Griffin oh, who is yep. uh, Johnny Nigo Gomez. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous bass baritone who, mm -hmm. you know, have the privilege on being on the same roster as, as, as mm -hmm. he get to do more things together. Yeah. Um, the Gonzal. Um, was, it, was it our tenor? Yeah. Joshua, uh, who's absolutely a fabulous tenor. Beautiful, yep. beautiful voice. And um, our Tokemada. Uh, Ian Kujara. Uh, yep. who's Fabulous tenor who also that season as well got well got to do um what's the what's the what's the show that we the, did? The Ariadne. Ariadne of Noxo. Yeah. <laughs> He's just hilarious. He's just so funny. Yeah. Just amazing. Oh amazing uh held yeah. in this beautiful, beautiful voice. And and mm -hmm. just an amazing show. And just like Emily Cook, uh yeah. who, was the, uh, who just imagined this whole thing up. Yeah. And getting to work with Ward. Um, who was mm -hmm. absolutely amazing, and yeah. everybody was, you know, behind the scenes, the scenes, and we just put it all together. I just want to give to all of them. They're absolutely oh. amazing, uh, and I'm just privileged to get to work with them. Hopefully, I get to work with all of them very, very soon. So yeah, yeah. But, well, I cannot wait to no. watch. Um, um, we, we're gonna let everyone go here and grab a quick uh, refresh of your beverage if you if you are yeah. drinking tonight. Yeah. Whatever. Even myself is. too. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys the show. Josh, it was so great to catch up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell everybody I said hello. I missed them all. I will. Thank yeah. you. Well, enjoy Bye. the show. <laughs>
Tu n'es pas, 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 tu n
Seigneur, je vous salue. Je ne vous ai pas compris. Et moi, aussi, mon frère, vous vous dites à nos autres, à nos Moi, 
pedale, ça vaut plus. Le muletier n'a pas de conversation.
Oh, <laughs> 
Si Monsieur, soyez bien 